Hey everyone, this is Cenix again, and I'm back for episode 10 of my Painting Faces series. We're up into the double digits now, and the ending is almost in sight. Um, but for now, we're just going to be painting this face in the upper left-hand corner. And I think the gimmick for this face is just going to be more dynamic lighting schemes. So I'm going to have the lighting coming from the bottom right and really popping up onto the face. Um, I kind of tried it a little bit with a face that you couldn't see much of. So this face, obviously, you can see the neck and some of the shoulders. So it's going to give me a lot better chance to really show off some interesting lighting. So to make sure I'm happy with my lighting, I actually just brought in a nice dark base tone for starters. And then I'm just focusing completely on the lighting. I'm not worrying about colors or anything like that. I just wanted to bring in a lighter tone and really establish my lighting scheme and get my values working for me. Um, and then now that I'm done with that and I have a lighting scheme that I like, I can just go back in and color pick from my dark values or my light values and kind of change up the hues a little bit using my color wheel, but try not to change the values that I've established. Uh, but just bringing in some more reddish uh, hues on the middle of the face. And since this is one of the few males on the page, I get to bring in some more bluish tones into the bottom half of the face, which is always fun. Uh, gives that nice beardy, stubbledy look. And obviously I'm not picking from the blue area of the color wheel, but I'm just desaturating my oranges in order to make it look more bluish or greenish, um, depending on what hue variation I have. Um, the forehead was giving me a little bit of trouble. It sometimes does when I'm working with these uh, more darker tones or I'm working in shadow because I obviously want to bring in some more yellowish tones on the forehead uh, like you might normally do, but it doesn't quite work out that well. So that's something I got to work on. My foreheads are kind of messy and not that great. So while I fumble around with that for a while, uh, this will give me a good opportunity to go back into some of the previous videos and answer some of the questions that might have been asked in comments and stuff like that. So, let's see, it looks like we have a comment from Howie again, and he's asking if I could talk a bit about style and what my thoughts were on style and if it, people should let it develop naturally or more force it and stuff like that. Um, style is something that will always kind of develop naturally but you definitely can force it in a certain direction. Obviously, style should be something that you enjoy and that you're happy with. So if you see an artist that does something that you're just completely in love with, um, you can try to emulate that in ways. Um, you'll find that eventually your own style will emerge from whatever you do. Uh, obviously, you can't imitate someone perfectly and your own style will probably start to come out. And I would say the main thing that will usually influence it is what tools you find are most useful for you. Um, like for me, uh, just as an example, I, I like to use pens when I like sketch and stuff. And I like to um, use kind of these simple harder brushes. I'm not very good with those soft like air brushes and things like that in my digital painting. So that's why everything always looks kind of hard edged and very kind of impressionistic and has all those strokes and everything like that. So it kind of develops from the tools you use and I would say that's kind of the main factor but um, don't worry too much about it like stylus is something that will come to you. Oh I'm missing out on all this good stuff so while I was talking about that it looks like I was actually going in and color correcting some stuff. I, I tried to lighten it up a little bit because it was a bit dark and especially on videos, I've noticed that when I record these videos and at least watch them back on YouTube that they're often a lot darker than they were when I um, made them or at least when I originally saw them. The art seems to come out a bit darker and uh, stuff like that. So I made sure I lightened it up a bit just so it's not too dark in the video form and it reads better. And after I did that, that was kind of my finishing touch on my base layer. And as soon as I finish those that little color correction, I'm just coming right back in and working above the line art and trying to get rid of a lot of the line art and uh, do that normal painterly thing that I've been doing on a lot of these faces. 
um, trying to bring in... So I decided to really just bring in some more reddish tones on the forehead instead of trying to bring in anything yellowish, and I think that works, you know. I don't I don't think uh, bringing in red on the top of the head is any real problem. Obviously, there's that whole theory about the colors of the face, and you have yellow on top and red in the middle, and maybe more greenish and blue in the bottom, but... Um, obviously those aren't hard fast rules if you have a if you think something will look better you can do whatever you want and everything like that so I'm bringing in some redness on the nose like normal a little bit of highlights and stuff like that I got rid of all the eyebrows and the eye uh, line art just kind of went over it and tried to make it look good um, without any eyebrows or eye lines or stuff like that. And I'm also trying to get rid of the lines on the outside of the face too, especially since this is uh, meant to be a really strong bottom lit or side lit and, uh, face and there's all that light coming from the bottom. I, I don't want any harsh lines to kind of add a lot of black to that side of the face uh, when it should be obviously very lit so I'm getting rid of the lines and I'm even going over the lines in my lightest value which is uh, pretty light it's definitely not white but the lightest value I'm using on this face is right on the edge where those black lines were um, obviously it kind of blends in with the background or my paper color a bit so I brought in a little hint of darkness around the edge of the chin and stuff just so it stands out a bit and I don't think that affects the lighting too much um actually going back for a second there's something I forgot to mention uh while I'm working above the line art for this time I'm actually not using the thick and thin brush this time I'm actually using just the basic scratch board tool which has no opacity setting so this whole time while I've been working above the line art I've actually been using a brush that doesn't have any opacity so I'm just working in really hard edge colors um, it's kind of more visible on the neck area and stuff where you can see there's no real opacity blending between different uh, tones and it's just kind of hard edges everywhere. Uh, but it's like that everywhere on the face and everything and um, I don't know why I decided to do that for this one. I thought it would just be something slightly different and I'm trying to also maybe hint at uh, that the brushes you use aren't that important. Um, Obviously, your kind of style might develop from a brush you like using, but you'll find that that style starts to carry over into any brush you use. Like that brush you use to kind of establish your comfort zone. Now when you go into other brushes, you'll find yourself kind of mimicking that style with those other brushes too. So you can see I'm kind of mimicking that uh, style I normally do, even though I'm using a different tool to do it. Uh, it looks pretty much the same, just slightly more hard-edged. So, while I mess around with the final details on this face, I think I have just enough time to answer another comment that was posted. And this comment was posted on one of the old Let's Explore DeviantArt videos. Someone commented on my bad-mouthing of the intellectual side of movies. Um, so I'll just say that there is a difference between, say, something informational, such as The Botany of Desire, which is a pretty good documentary, and something intellectual, which usually just expounds upon something you already know for the sake of mental gratification. Not that I hate all intellectual movies. In fact, here are a few good ones for me to recommend to you guys. But anyway, on the subject of uh, my old Let's Explore DeviantArt videos, this would actually be a good opportunity uh, for me to ask my viewership if there's anyone that has a portfolio on DeviantArt that they would like me to review, I'll be happy to do that in a video, probably in between this video and the next video, that would be fun for me to do. So if you have a DeviantArt, just post it here if you want it reviewed, and I will do that. And I think that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.